Rheumatoid arthritis is a common autoimmune disorder of the joints that affects about 1% of the population worldwide, more often women than men. The exact causes of the disease are unknown, but an individual's risk is thought to be increased by a combination of genetic and environmental factors. Many of the genes associated with rheumatoid arthritis are involved in immune system function. Non-genetic risk factors include age, diet, infectious agents and smoking. In an autoimmune disorder such as rheumatoid arthritis, the immune system mistakenly attacks and destroys the body's own cells and tissues, which immunologists refer to as self, and this autoimmunity can begin many years before joint symptoms are noticed. Doctors can use blood tests to identify this pre-clinical phase by the presence of multiple factors in the blood, such as autoantibodies and inflammatory factors. These early autoantibodies are thought to first develop outside of the joints, possibly in the gut, mouth or lungs. Environmental factors such as smoking can modify our self-proteins, making them targets for the immune system. One particular modification is called citrullination. When the immune system recognizes these modified self-proteins, it leads to a breach of self-tolerance and the production of autoreactive B cells and autoantibodies and later autoreactive T cells, the hallmarks of autoimmune disease. By the time that symptoms appear, the immune response has intensified and the antibodies produced target a broader range of self-proteins. But it's only in some patients that this systemic autoimmunity progresses to joint inflammation, which is possibly triggered by an increase in joint permeability and increased access to antibodies. Working out how to prevent this progression is a major goal for scientists. In patients who do develop joint disease, the small joints of the hands and feet are most commonly affected. After entering a joint, immune cells and autoantibodies bind to modified self-proteins in the cartilage, bone and lining of the joint called the synovium. This induces an inflammatory response and activates cells in the joint such as macrophages, neutrophils and osteoclasts, as well as blood monocytes. Activated monocytes differentiate into yet more macrophages, which together with other cells in the joint produce soluble inflammatory factors known as cytokines. Drugs targeting these cytokines are highly effective treatments for many patients. Left unchecked, however, damage caused by the inflammatory environment can expose new self-antigens to the immune system, continuing the cycle. At this stage, the first clinical symptoms of joint pain, swelling and warmth appear. Some patients recover, but most commonly, patients develop a chronic destructive disorder. As the disease progresses, dendritic cells display the newly exposed self-antigens and activate T-cells in the joint itself or in the local lymph node. In addition, B-cells infiltrate the joint where they proliferate and produce antibodies and other factors, further amplifying the autoimmune response. Cells in the joint lining, called fibroblast-like synoviocytes, also proliferate and grow into the joint space, spreading across to the cartilage surface. These cells secrete matrix-degrading enzymes which erode the cartilage tissue. Bone is also eroded as osteoclasts, which contribute to normal bone turnover, become hyperactivated. Bone erosion, cartilage destruction and joint swelling cause severe pain, restrict movement of the joint and in the worst cases can cause joint deformities. And as well as the joints, other organs and body systems can be affected by the ongoing inflammation. For example, inflammation in the blood vessels can lead to heart disease. So early and aggressive therapy is recommended to prevent these systemic complications. By further understanding the immune markers and mechanisms of rheumatoid arthritis, it's hoped that targeted interventions could ultimately change the course of the disease.